You're watching Nigeria Votes on NN24. I'm Tolu Lokwe Adileru in Lagos, Nigeria. As Nigerians go to the polls on April 2nd, 2011, we're taking a look at some ways in which the voting and the accountability of those responsible for making sure each man's vote counts is going to be done. Of course, we're going to talk about this with people who have a vested interest and experts who can give us some, some information about how these things can be done. In the studio with me, I have Ben Gashesson, who is the Executive Director of Paradigm Initiative Nigeria, and he's also a volunteer with the non-governmental organization Enough is Enough. And with him is Emika Okoye, who is a mobile developer, who's going to tell us the nitty-gritty about the mobile applications and other ways in which accountability can be preserved in Nigeria's elections. It's a pleasure having you in the studio. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. The program that we're taking a look at right now, or rather the application that is, is called Revoda. And it's really about making sure that Nigerians can be active participants in the voting and they can be eye journalists in terms of what's happening in their polling center. So tell us about it. Okay, uh, Revoda is basically a mobile application that allows you to monitor the elections. And what, what usually used to happen was that as a monitor, you had to register with, you know, with INEC mm -hmm. or ENEC, depending on who is you know, pronouncing who you're it. Talking to. And you get registered as a, you know, as a monitor, and then you move around to check what's happening, you know, putting unit A, putting unit B, and most likely you can't vote yourself. But now we're saying that, guess what? We've got an opportunity, and this is what AI Nigeria thinks. You know, AI yeah. Nigeria basically said, let's RSVP, register, select, vote, and protect. And to protect our votes, the idea is, instead of being a monitor who goes around, how about you vote, mm -hmm. and then you also monitor? So the idea is use, taking advantage of mobile applications, of you know, mobile opportunities, and the fact that we now have mobile phones almost everywhere, you cannot download an application on your phone. And you know, Revoda is very simple. You just go to eiNigeria.org slash Revoda or Revoda.org, download the application on your phone, install it, and then you just set up your profile, and you can send reports from your polling unit you know, about INEC, uh, arrival, about materials, about anything, you know, basically. So that's what Revoda does. But apart from that, it also allows us as EIA to be able to send information specific location-specific information to you. So if mm -hmm. anything is going on in Alimosh or local government, for example, those who are registered from that area, we can send information to them to say, hey, in Alimosh or local government area, voting has been extended by three hours, and we don't have to send information to everybody on, on, on the database. Mm -hmm. And Mika, let me ask you, we all know that mobile phones are there because they make communication so much easier from one point to the other. But in terms of the application, why can't you just say, take a picture, upload it on Facebook, or take a picture and um, upload it to any website? Why should it be, or why does it have to be an application? Well, the application is, is actually to make uh, formatted reports easy. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, SMS is, uh, is it's, it's not user friendly. It not, does not have a user friendly interface. So, and you know, there are certain variables we want so that we can track certain uh, information and data, you know, on what's going on on the internet. So, it's good to build an interface that will be simple and equally stupid. You know. Yes. So, <laughs> you know, we we did that with the Revoda app. So we now created templates of different kinds of reports that you can give for each, for, uh, for your various uh, polling units. Mm -hmm. And then with just a click of a button, you send those reports. Mm -hmm. And those reports are so easy that they're in a pull down, you know, your options are in a pull down uh, uh, box. So you just, click, you just choose and click. What kind of options are we looking at? Uh, is it a form you fill, a questionnaire, a check it's, the it's, box it's here? It's like basically, you know, you're filling a, a simple form that mm -hmm. says, I mean, practically what is on it is, and if you check Revolta.org, you, you know, you see this on, on, you know, the how it works page. So the first one is INEC official arrival, you know, election type. What type of election are you reporting? So you click on this, you see the drop down or you see the options. Is it state assembly? Is it presidential? So if you're typing a text message, for example, some will type presidential elections. Some will type press elect. Mm -hmm. so, so it will be difficult to manage that information to know aggregate it immediately. Okay. But with this application, everybody selects presidency for presidential elections. And when you select that, every information we get for presidency comes in the same way. So we can easily pick the information regardless of you know the volume. So the next thing is INEC registration. I mean INEC uh, officials arrival. Mm -hmm. If INEC officials arrive on time or they're late or they didn't arrive at all, you can report. Some would have written INEC officials are not here. Some would have written ah INEC officials never come home. Mm -hmm. Some would have written INEC officials no not here. And it would be difficult to manage that. So okay. what we're saying is just choose one. When you choose late arrival or arrived on time, so it's like that for all the options. 
for the results also, it's a very simple format. You write the name of the party equals result, and you can send. And the good thing is, you can send all this with just the cost of one for the cost of one single SMS. Mm -hmm. Any official arrival, whether you voted, if there was rigging, if there was violence, if police behavior was intimidating or friendly or not, and the results, and you just click on send. And once you send with one single SMS, the report comes to us, comes to the database, and then we can then look at the database and say, okay, in Quara State, in this local government in this ward, in this specific polling unit. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what is happening. And you know, from that, if there's any reason for us to now send information to every member of that polling unit or every member of that you know, local government or ward, we can send that to them and say, hey guys, this is what's going on. Or if we need to you know, escalate that to INEC officials or to the police or to any other agency of government, mm -hmm. then we can easily do that. What do you think the response has been? How do you see the downloads? How many people really have hit up the web page, want to be actively participating in monitoring Nigeria's elections now? You know, basically, we know we've been pushing this through the social media, uh, Facebook and Twitter, and we are hitting 2,000 downloads, you know, for now. Though we could say on average, we are having like uh, 300 per hour okay. uh, download. Uh, it's going to peak as we blast more. We expect high usage from the second election because the time uh, between uh, the, the uh, downloads now and mm -hmm. the next election, is, we are just 24 hours. So okay. uh, usage will, will definitely not be that high until the governorship uh, election. It's presidential. Presidential. Uh, no, no. no. <laughs> it will start. I think the governorship is going to really oh, be the major one. Yeah, okay. be the major ones. You know. So it's it's actually quite interesting. And again, you know, this is the first time this is happening in Africa. This is the first uh, 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 application that you use to monitor election from a mobile phone. It has never been implemented. So I think right now Nigeria is now showcasing to the world how election can be monitored and be reported. Now, and also pushing mm -hmm. uh, uh, civil, civic reporting to a, a new level. Now there's a question that comes up because when you have some um, news organizations and they have mm -hmm. people send in their own reports, there's always a pledge or a, an option that you click in terms of authenticity, in terms okay. of yeah. to your knowledge the information that you're sending out is yeah. true. How are you doing the same thing? Because credibility in true, the information, true. credibility in the pictures, yeah. credibility in the sound yeah. that people are sending out through your organization is yeah. going to be it's a major important. factor for this. Very, I mean, very, very, very simple. What, what we've done is there is there's a parallel system. I mean, there are parallel systems. There are other organizations who are also monitoring the elections. And what we've done is there is a synergy between all the organizations. We have a situation room where we're able to compare, you know, data. You know, to say that okay, we're getting a, you know high, a lot of reports from a certain polling unit. That are you getting the same thing? But the good thing again is also this is based on crowdsourcing. In crowdsourcing, the basic assumption is that 20% of the people are the ones that will cause 80% of the problems, which is basically you know a usual law life for say you know the Pareto principle and all that. So most likely the 20% will be diluted by the 80% who will send accurate you know, results. So that's normally the principle of crowdsourcing. That's the way it works. But beyond that, the second level of checks is now to con con you know, connect with other organizations and say, hey, what are you seeing? Are you seeing what we are seeing? Because even if we say there is violence somewhere, guess what? Then we're also monitoring what's going on, you know, on Twitter, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. If we don't have any picture to prove that, or any video, any, you know, what we can then do, like I said, is send information to that polling unit or that local government and say, hey guys, we're getting this kind of report. Can you please confirm? Okay. If everybody responds or 80% respond and say, hey, it's true, everywhere is on fire or everywhere is perfectly so peaceful, we finish voting in one hour, mm -hmm. then we can know. So there are different levels of check of checks that, that we have for this. Even, yeah. even then, you have to understand that this is parallel voting tabulation. It's meant to check mm -hmm. the, 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 the government source of uh, the election. So it's, it's gauging against uh, uh, the government source of results, that's, that, that's what we are doing, okay. you know, crowdsourcing the info. So um, emphasis is not on whether your data is, might uh, look clean or tainted, but more of like does what the civic uh, 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 reporting, does it 
gave uh, credence to so what is, is being announced. Okay. So. Now, in terms of mobile applications and mobile phones, an estimated 87.3 million Nigerians. I'll have to pause on that question, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the number of Nigerians who have mobile phones and how many people the organization believes that they can get to be active and be participants in the elections. You're watching Nigeria Votes. I'm Tolokwa Adeleri. We'll be right back. Stay with us.